Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, we actually have some uh, pretty cool stuff to go talk about all throughout today, where we've had a few very interesting and brand new uh, games overall. So we have a brand new mysterious game that's kind of floating around the PlayStation universe. We have Phil Spencer actually getting some really good news when it comes to the Xbox and PlayStation Activision ecosystem, and as well as a lot of just little various things all throughout today. So pretty good for PlayStation gamers, for Xbox gamers, and of course gamers as a whole. And of course, when you guys are brand new, make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on. We have that Twitter and Twitch room probably live up very soon up here on Twitch. If you guys want to follow up on Twitter, we'll probably be doing some Twitch con throughout this past week in case you guys want to see fun pictures and selfies or like just convention stuff or whatever. And of course, we also are doing an like, ongoing promotion right now with Best Buy. I'll link down below in all of our how links in case you want to get the nice little Theragun. Hashtag add technically with all of them, but it's linked down below in case you guys want to check that out or support us and up in the channel. And let's dive into some pretty fun news if you guys want to subscribe. So, all the usual kind of long-winded intro, but some pretty cool news over here. First and foremost, let's go talk about this quick Xbox acquisition side and some more funner news and mysterious news after where if you guys missed it as of these past few days, we also may go do like more of an in-depth video on it, but basically the CMA, which is the big European, UK regulatory bodies, have basically all approved the Activision acquisition. So as of right this second, it does seem like Activision is currently owned and, well, going to be transitioned into the acquisition by Xbox. So what that basically means is all those games, the Call of Duties, World of Warcrafts, uh, everything. There are so many different games like Crash Bandicoot, when it comes to like Overwatch, when it comes to Spyro, Guitar Hero. There is a lot of games that are now underneath the official Xbox brand. Now, I think this is kind of overall good. We may do, like I said, a separate video on that. But I think that it's overall good for Xbox. More individual Xbox IPs. Activision's a very big company. And one big thing is they also want to go and push and reiterate their support for the PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, and all these other different types of markets. So I'm going to go and be very, very excited for this. I think it's good. But also overall, why it's going to be good for PlayStation 5 players as well. Phil Spencer extends Olive Branch to PS5 players as the Xbox Activision Blizzard deal closes. Um, you are welcome here and will remain welcome. The Xbox boss has some encouraging words for PS5 and Switch owners. So as, I, as you guys have probably heard a lot of the drama, it was around a 10-year deal they try to go offer to PlayStation for Call of Duty. And same thing with, like, you know, NVIDIA, Steam, and Nintendo. Now, Nintendo and Steam are like, yeah, sure, easy peasy. Has, like, we're not even affected by this, really. We have our own kind of separate ecosystems. Nintendo has, like, the kids. They have the Marios, Nintendos, everything else. And then when it comes to, well, you know, Steam, they don't care. They're just trying to go and sell any game they can. Like, they're more of, like, a, you know, like a store. So they don't mind either way. But one of the bigger things over here is that... This is also going to be a very nice homage for PlayStation, kind of offering like a reassurance if you are more of a PlayStation gamer. So Xbox boss Phil Spencer has given players on rival consoles, most notably PS5, some reassuring words about the future exclusivity or lack of thereof. Now, right now we only have that 10-year contract locked on in, but the part two of this is that maybe they'll give them a little bit more wiggle room. We also have Jim Ryan, who's also stepping down, if you guys remember that big story. So maybe the brand new PlayStation CEO might be the go and smooth over Xbox and maybe have some less tight deals going on. So today on the October 13th, more so yesterday, the UK CMA approved Microsoft's acquisition of that division blizzard. So this pretty much is going to be going through. That was the final regulatory hurdle for the massive buyout following months of legal battles, which of course led to Microsoft closing the deal earlier today that put several multi-platform series, Call of Duty, Diablo, Overwatch, Crash Bandicoot, Tony Hawk, Spyro, and many more underneath Microsoft's control. And there's a lot of folks have been kind of concerned about this, obviously, because, well, like, if PlayStation users can't play games like Overwatch or Minecraft or all of this, some games have had success over time. Think Minecraft or even other things like maybe Overwatch might be continued, but people get worried about that. But basically, Phil Spencer has extended an olive branch to other platform owners with some reassuring, although they were saying... For the millions of fans who love Activision, Blizzard, and King Games, we want you to know that today is a good day to play. Spencer sent a statement on Xbox Wire. You are the heart and soul of these franchises, and we are honored to have you as a part of our community. Whether you play on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, or even mobile, you are welcome here. You will remain welcome even if Xbox isn't where you play your favorite franchise. So basically like a really, really nice kind of laid-back call where it's like, hey, no matter what, 
we'll hook you up. Like, that, that's kind of like them. They already have the 10-year deal, so it's not really sure if there's going to be more to it or more alluding, like alluding towards it. But it's nice to see at the end of the day. Like, we want to make sure all these tips and types of things, too, as well. Like, I don't know. I think it's nice. So Microsoft previously pledged to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation consoles for the next 10 years, although no such promises were made about the other games from the publisher. Now, once again, if we have a brand new CEO, they may be able to go and, like, make some cool back alley deals or go something like that. I be cool with that. I'd be happy with that. I want to go and see more people on these platforms. Activision could also make more money. So basically Xbox can make more money if you have the games like the Overwatch, getting microtransactions or things like, you know, wow, staying on PC markets. I don't know. Like, there's always options everywhere. So it's kind of nice to see. They go and say, because we're, when everyone plays, we all win. Spencer adds, we believe our news today will unlock a world of possibilities for more ways to play. Thank you for the ongoing support. We have so much more to come in the months ahead. I'm excited for our future and cannot wait to share it with you. So basically, it's kind of more of a bigger deal because that paragraph we read right there. We believe the news today will unlock a world of more possibilities. And this could even just be more things for hosting. Like, don't forget, there was a little bit of a mo monopoly issue going on with the cloud streaming. That's why Ubisoft is now involved in Activision streaming. We still don't know fully what's going to happen with that. What's going to roll out, how it's going to roll out, or etc. But Ubisoft does technically have the rights now for Activision games. So it might even, not even be on Game Pass. Maybe it'll be on Game Pass and also Ubisoft. But as well, there's also some rumors that maybe even PlayStation Plus might have a chance to have some of these games being able to be streamed. And the new streaming service just rolled out for PlayStation. So overall, this might be just kind of a win for everyone. We'll have to see how everything kind of evolves. But so far, I'm going to be kind of somewhat cautiously optimistic mainly on the wording, although Xbox did say on multiple leaked documents that they wanted to buy out PlayStation, so you always had to be able to be careful on what's front-facing rather than what's actually happening behind closed doors and the actions in between. So either way, right now, uh, it kind of seems like the next big major change in gaming is about to go and happen, and a lot of big things are coming out in the near future. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on all this one. I'm a little bit ex excited. I'm a PC guy. I'm a PS5 guy. I'm a Switch guy. So if I can play most of these games on almost any platform, I don't think I have any big major issues. Like, nonetheless, like I think I'm kind of cool with everything at the end of the day. So I give it a big thumbs up. Now, as well, we also had some pretty big and serious games over here, too, as well, coming out from a mysterious Soulsborne game. This is going to be the big story of the day where... This game was apparently now just tested in London. So it was just discovered that a recent playtest took place in London, assumedly for PlayStation UK, that involved a game for Soulsborne fans. So think about any type of game like a Sekiro, Lies of P, Bloodborne, Elden Ring, etc. But nobody has any clue what this game could have been. So apparently PlayStation has some big secret projects going on that people don't even know about. In the examples provided on the now-closed listing, games like Elden Ring, Bloodborne, Wulong, and Dark Souls were all referenced in this random secret PlayStation game. This four-day playtest for which the testers received $500, which is not bad. I mean, I'd probably do that for 500 bucks. Uh, just saying, just saying. <laughs> if you guys want to hit about the Twitch stream, hit me up. Uh, was taking place over an Oxford circus in central London, and it ran from the 10th to the 13th of October. Now, gamers who have picked up on the news have started wondering exactly what game was being tested, and it probably was under like some pretty big NDAs. So this was a PlayStation-exclusive, most likely game, because if PlayStation's paying money for it, the probably PlayStation-exclusive, and people are trying to figure out on what this secret game could have been. In social circles and forum conversations such as those found to Reset Terra, the consensus is that the game that was tested was Rise of Ronin an upcoming action RPG being developed by Team Ninja that's expected to release on the PlayStation 5 next year. Uh, if we were to launch in the first few months of 2024, it makes sense that the playtest would be taking place around now. So basically, like, there is like a secret hidden PlayStation game coming out. Otherwise, there are suspicions that it could be Blue Points. So basically, don't forget the same people who made uh, the Dark Souls or Demon Souls remaster that came out for the PlayStation 5 launch. And that's also been kind of out for a while. It was like a literal launch title, almost like three years. So it makes sense that they had another game that was working as that game was finalizing. And then like, you know, they've had three years to fully work on it. Plus any time beforehand, like, as you guys know, if you have like 200 people working, 50 people can start building up the base and run the story, they can get the 3D modeling, etc. Because, like, once it's all done for the other game, they, don't, they can, like, move to different teams. You know how it is. So a lot of folks are assuming it might actually be a brand new PlayStation exclusive. Otherwise, there are suspicions that it could be Bluepoint's new game that was announced as being in development back in January. In the past, Blueprint has done some work on Demon's Souls and Shadow of the Colossus, so a lot of these games would kind of fit that same genre. A little bit more dark, nitty-gritty, and all that, and make a lot of sense. So, it also, some people are saying even, like, Bloodborne, too, but either way, interesting to see. And as well, we also had some other various big games, too, as well. We also had some more news on the Kill the Justice League details coming out. This game was, like, awkwardly paused. It was getting hyped up for a while, but yeah. So, basically, as of right this 
2nd has been revealed on Reddit with all this type of stuff, saying that the game in details, prices, additions, and details as well, and of course, on top, is coming out pretty big. So an internal not final trailer of the game was shown at a trade show, revealing that two versions of the game are going to be released, a $100 version for the game as well, with a few day early release, which I don't usually like too much, and then as well, some people get a battle pass for extra costumes, also kind of weird to go put that in like a single player slash somewhat multiplayer game, kind of how it was for Marvel's Avengers games. But there was going to be real-time weather, day-night cycles, Metropolis is twice the size of Gotham, Night City, working on one years of extra content, you, they also don't know if you can do co-op online or play it solo and switch between the characters, but overall, cool stuff coming out. So Give me your thoughts and comments down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We have the Twitter and Twitch stream down below. We also have all the Amazon links and the Howl links. Check in all the Howl links as well if you guys want to. We have a bunch of them in the comment section, all that. And I appreciate y'all for watching in the first place.